Welcome back to Nicklin's Comic Corner, classic less known classic. This is episode number 2907 and double shot number 2801. We have the first trades of these two Dawn of DC trades. You are thinking, didn't the ship just end? Yeah, it's ending this month. After only around for one year. One year this issue was around for. The only Infinite Frontier was around for two years. Two years. Here's one for you. Rebirth. That was around for also for two years. Because DC loves their initiatives. They like these new fresh starts people. Like, of course, the first big one they had. Uh, well, of course, he's up like one year later, which that was actually pretty positive, mostly anyways. And then we had stuff like Batman Reborn, which was for bad books, but I would say the next one after one year later probably was not until New 52, which most of that was very mixed at best. And then we have Dawn DCU, which that was more negative than positive received because a lot of the books that were at the time... I mean, the limited series were actually better written than the actual ongoings at a period of time. Some of whom basically had no reason to be published. Like the Colin Bunn Lobo book, which featured the uh, the pretty Lobo, even though no one wanted this guy. Readers reject this guy because everyone said, that is not Lobo. You may claim it's Lobo, but it's not Lobo. The one with muscles. Carries big chain, rides a motorcycle. That's Lobo. The one you created is not Lobo. Yeah. <clears throat> Rebirth was basically mostly very positive, And that lasted for a year, but it still continued on for a little while until Dark Knight Metal. And then we have stuff afterwards. No major initiatives per se. I would say after Rebirth ended, we didn't have any major... I would say we kind of had something with, like, New Age of Heroes and, like, New Justice. Smaller stuff, but wasn't, like, a company-wide thing, per se. But this thing was super, very positive. I would say, like, every single new book that was launched under this initiative has been really good so far. Except for Wonder Woman Flash. Flash is good most for storytelling, except for how the villain is. Wonder Woman, it uh, its opening strikes, first few issues were just... Well, pretty offensive. It's like, what the heck was Tom King thinking? But this is not written by Tom King. Of course, this was the same guy who gave us Superman and Green Arrow. Those, sadly, this book, uh, this actually started with his very brief frame of the book, which it ends this year. But the book is still continuing. Um, I don't remember who's replacing Brandon for him. I'll look up later. Okay, so first we have is Batman and Robin, Volume 1. Father and Son, which contains the first six issues of Batman and Blind 3 and the annual for the book. Yep, the annual. Now, of course, prior to this, Joshua Williams wrote both these two solo, they're both solo titles, respectively. The Williamson's run on Batman was very, very short. It lasted from, like, I think it was like, it, it, picked, it came out right after Tinia Thrash out of his run, and before Zodesky started his run for the book. Which, believe it or not, that was about three years ago. Yes. Of course, he had this really good run for Robin. And then that book ended because of Dark Christ. Of course, you have Deathstroke Incorporated, which is awesome. Now you have this book. What some might say, it's basically picking up right where Batman vs. Robin left off. But here's the thing. Williamson wrote Batman vs. Robin. That was Mark Wade. Some people keep, keep getting confused that Williamson was responsible for that. No, that was all Mark Way. He may have set it up, but he did not write the series. That was Way who did that. So, we have Simon Del Mundo, Mundo on the artwork with Mikhail Jen, Nicole Cosmogiga, and Howard Porter. Yes, I'm glad he brought in Howard Porter because basically we're together in Flash. Why not? First, he started out with basically at the Gotham Zoo. We have Batman and Robin. I love their dialogue. So, the main thing these early, the first thing we see here is a villain who, from what I can tell, was this villain's been around for thirteen years and she's been very rarely ever used. 
Hop, it's the White Rabbit. Yes, the character first appeared in David Hayne and Dave Finch's, I think it was like Dave Finch's run for Batman, uh, Batman Dark Knight Volume 2, who disappeared. No one saw her again until she popped up in the Clayface one shot. Now she's here. And she changed her costume. Yeah, no longer the Playboy style alpha that they eventually gave her. Oh no, gave her a coat now. So they have people held hostage. They, of course, deal with it. Oh yeah, she's got her henchmen. The Black Rabbits. Something she didn't have before. Like, I like the fact Williamson basically just just utilize a character no one cared to use. And of course, they take on the, the Zeppelin. And then we have Bruce and Damien go to the Brownstone. Now, I'm not sure when Bruce got this Brownstone. Apparently got it at some point. And we see this girl who's there. I think it's, uh, is it Vicky Vale? Don't know. She's uh, not named. So yeah. Yes, yeah, and apparently the way she's written, she has no problem with... Now, I love the dialogue that the Robin, Bat, Batman and Robin have in their costume, where basically it's very accepting. It's not very grumpy. So it looks like, though, that Bruce kept some paintings from the house. Like... And, of course, they mentioned... They mentioned it, there's a... Because of everything going with Selena. That, that is a reference to Gotham War, which Williams had nothing to do with. My guess is he probably threw that line in just as a reference to it. And we also see, like, a katana. Oh, by the way, uh, Damien's backpack is covered in Batman stickers, which I find that so awesome. Uh, like, it was like two Bat. It's like a sticker for Batman, two for Batman, one for Robin. There's even a sword. I'm not sure where uh, the Bruce I got the katana from. Maybe I got some point got it. And then we get like a flashback. A lip looks like to... Where well, he's flashes back to look like Gotham War and like Lazarus Island. Which of course that gets brought up here because Williamson wrote it. Of course, of course it. So yeah. We have this sort of... And we feel something interesting about Damien. He's an artist. Oh, one thing at least preach about, about Josh Williamson when we rewrite Damien. He's not a dick. Yes, because Grant Morrison, when he first introduced him, he was a dick when he was introduced. Tomasi kind of smoothed him out, and I'm glad Williamson picks up the idea of not making him a dick. And, of course, he makes dinner. Actually, more like he makes breakfast for him and his father. And apparently, Alfred taught him how to cook. Not a bad idea. I mean, Alfred's not there anymore. Yeah, here's the weird thing. Call him Alfred, which is interesting, because... A lot of the time, Damien only referred him as Pennyworth. He never heard him. He very. He never referred to him as his first name. Like, don't touch T, the gentleman. And so Bruce wants to go to school, and like, yeah, we got cases, but much about lab core and I, I love the whole hologram thing, which is so cool. I mean, we can't have the Batcave right now, but hey, this is really cool. I like this whole aspect of the hologram thing. So, and of course, Bruce is like, you're not trying to bat bill. Well, he's got his own car. Yes, it's a car for Robin. Now, I have missed these things. Now, it, this is a weird thing when it comes to, to Robin and cars. Because for some strange reason, some people at DC think, oh, Robin drives a motorcycle. He only can have a motorcycle. Tim had a car. Yep, and when Chuck Dixon left the book, he had the car get sold, but the car was brought back briefly during his run, and then was never seen again. Now we have this cool-looking car that, it looks like it's something out of Mad Max, but it's fine. It's a car for, for Robin. It's not Redbird. I love Redbird. I think Redbird's a cool car, but this is fine. And then we see that apparently we have Orca working with Killer Croc for some reason, his hostage thing, which... Oh, yeah, and they're working with the Terrible Trio. Now, this now I, I get the fact that Killer Croc, yeah, people know who he is because Batman animated series. He's a long-time co comic, comic, creator, comic character uh, created by Jerry Conway. Yep, comic created this guy. Orca, this might surprise you. 
Uh, do you create a killer orca? Larry Hama. Yep, it is by far Larry Hama's only contribution for D for Batman comics. It's created this one character. Excuse me. Uh, I, I found Chuck Dixon's podcast of why his own was so short. Why it was only seven issues? Because he and Scott McDaniel uh, didn't get along. They they had they had very bad chemistry with each other. So that's the reason we left. Table Trio. Uh, interesting to go with the animal mask thing because basically Great White Shark was a gangster. Like. I, I like the fact he brought these guys in because they're not that big of Batman villains, so why not? And we see Mysterious Sniper, who's like wearing the mask. And apparently, you know who Robin is, so like they've encountered Robin before. Yeah, and then we introduce his brand new villain. And we have Batman falling off building. Yeah, who's called Shush. Which, when they run into her later, he, Batman asks her, Where is Tom? Where, where is Tommy Elliot? So. And then we see Damien uh, basically sparring with one of his teachers. He's being very, like, he's basically, he's basically like a proper instructor. Seamus apparently Talia doesn't like it very much, so she's fired for doing her job properly, which is weird, even though she was told, yeah, so don't have lay hair on his head. Why? He's training. Yeah, and of course, Damien saves his father. And then we see Shush make her debut. Yes, that's her name. Shush. Yeah, she is pretty much in a way a female hush. That's the whole point of the character. Oh, yeah, and then we have... I love Williamson doing this because... Williamson basically is definitely for doing this in comics. Like, you have Killer Croc uh, going up to Poison Ivy. Yep, go up to Poison Ivy. That's where he's going. I'm like... Okay, that's good. This is good marketing. Yeah, that's how you market a book. Like, okay, you read this book. Ooh, you want to read this? Check out this book. That is good marketing. I do not know why some, some writers at DC Marvel refuse to do this nowadays. Very rarely I see this. Williamson is all for this, from what I can tell. Uh, I can't think of any other writer. I think maybe King has done in the past. I can't think of anything else. So... He goes off to do his own thing. He's out of the book. And so then, of course, Bruce is wounded. So Damien stitches him up. Yes. So not only Alfred Tom the cook, he also taught him how to stitch properly. Which he does a really good job. Even even uh, Bruce compliments him on it. Like, nice work, son. You make a war time technician. It's like, Peter Tommy had to stitch properly. So there's less scar tissue left behind. And Damien's like, you must heal. The bad pellet only had every fix. Like, fine. But he still has to go to school. Yep. Girls of Gotham City High School, which I believe this is the same high school that Tim went to in the in the in the Robin ongoing. So the new reference to his father, and he's wearing sunglasses. And there's this there's this kid. Calls a Damien Vane, even though his last name is Wayne. He's like, return a notebook or lose your lose your arm. He's like, huh? What? He's making jokes, and then he just kicks in the face a few times, and he, and he basically just crouches on top of death, says, no type of notebook. And he just just his glasses, and then of course the principal comes and says, Mister She, have we had enough of each other in attention? Return the book. Yes, Principal Stone. Nice drawings, Damien Way Vane. He's like, I don't look, Mr. Wayne. Look at your skin. Has to be a peak years. Forget them. All oh, your Miss Hall. Thank you. It is something though the fact that now I think the principal realizes though that Damien basically was sort of uh provoked into the hitting him, hitting uh th this this other kid. And that's why he wasn't punished because he was provoked. He was he was getting back something that was technically his property. He refused to get back to. He's being a bully, and I appreciate the fact that Williamson writes this way because a lot of the time, basically, like yeah, like sometimes principles are written in comics to be just blatantly stupid, where 
they're just too blinded to see bullying. Here, she does notice that he's being bullied. And Damien is just, he just, he, just, he was provoked. He sees that she was, prov- he, he was, prov- he was, he was provoked by this kid. And, well, him being kicked basically uh, was pretty justified. He doesn't get punished for it. He's, he's booked to return. Oh, yeah, and also Damien suspects this woman would actually be one of his former teachers. We're like, now nah, I know what I'm here for. And then we see White Rabbits return again. And Damien drives his car. We can skip first period. She was cool. He's like, you should be wrestling. I'm thinking, wait a minute, is this during the daytime? Yes, yeah, daytime. So then, of course, then we have where it works with Sush. Oh, and I love the David Finch variant covers. I'm so happy he does variant covers in this book because, well, I, I always love his variant covers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, of course, you have a flashback to when uh, when he, Bruce is teaching him something, and then, of course, they end up fighting. And, of course, basically, he mentioned with Sush. I guess her name here. Or apparently, yeah, this is Winsfield, that she's the one who fired, she was, she was the one behind the sniper rifle that she won. Yep. And if he was a bomb, Batman drives his, his Batmobile. Yes, that's how the artist draws his Batmobile. And then we have where Shush is driving a car with, with a gun in her hand, and where Rabbit's right behind. Like, White Rabbit, jump. You crazy? Yep. She is saved. And. Yep. And then we cut to the Gotham Zoo. Where we have Damien talk to some. A doctor. So. And then Man Bat shows up. Yes. Freaking Man Bat. Yeah. And. It is pointed out to him after flashback of basically with the instructor who was fired because doing her job properly over decades. He's like, God thinks I'm fine to break the dog saying like, it needed me. I saw you with terrible trio, croc and orca, man bat. Some sort of you said I was not ready to give myself to you, Batman. I thought you died. I did. Over the years, I took myself with so many different chemicals, cautions with my body. I never saw his death with mirror cocoon to merge his superior specimen he see today. Yeah, I, I'm guessing Williamson decided to bring him back, despite the fact he was kind of brought back. Yeah, he died in Detective Comics 1040. Here he is back. Um, him explaining it was it was the chemicals, him being man bat basically brought him back after he supposedly died. Um, I can buy that. He's a scientist, of course, basically, because he injected himself so many times with this stuff over the years. So him basically surviving like this, being alive, despite fact, I think he, I think he did briefly appear in. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he did appear in Test Fourteen. Remember he did or not? You think? Oh, maybe, maybe it was a Lazarus stuff. Nope, it was the chemicals in his body, man by chemicals. I'm like fine. I'm glad the fact that Damien addressed the fact he died. And him explaining it. That's good storytelling. Because not addressing something like this is bad storytelling. Especially as there was, in fact, a dead body shown. And we have White Rabbit Luck with Batman. And... Of course, yeah... And Man Bat's working with, well, Sush. Now, here's the thing. We did also introduce in the final arc, Batman Dark Knight, we did use another, I think it was in the penultimate arc, where there was another Man Bat in the book, except it was uh, Kurt Langstrom's father who was Man Bat. I don't buy this being Abraham Langstrom at all. It's more like Kurt. Yes, and then we have Bruce just, Batman just covered in bats. So then, of course, they go to whatever this place is, and you have White Rabbit just working with him. I should point out White Rabbit is 
like here's her alpha kind of and if i can chance to meet williamson again uh, i'm gonna ask him like did, did he ask finch use his character so apparently there's this new prison batman set up to hold the batman villains so they've been kept in tubes for some reason oh yeah because of poison Yeah, I love the way, the way this issue ends, basically. It's so funny. It's like, you get back to Blackgate. Dynamic trio. You have to catch me first. And Dean was like, bragging rights to a brings her in. Okay, what's up? Yep, I love that. That's so awesome. And then, of course, you have Bruce taking Damien to school, meets the principal, mentions the fact that he used to be a former instructor. If you raise me here. Who is you? Five. Pancakes. Yes. And we have Bruce volunteering to serve pancakes. Yes, Bruce Wayne. Multi-millionaire. Because he's not villain anymore. Serving pancakes. And David's like, what are you doing? Volunteering. And I did with Orca. There's a flashback to White Rabbit. Yeah, White Rabbit, Killer, Killer Croc, and Man Bat. It's hush. So, the deal with that, of course, Batman's new armor that he's got here. They have Damien at school for the whole week. And there's this girl who's there. It's not Maya. I know that for sure. She's taller than Maya. Where Damien is like playing soccer. He's being... And then we see like... Oh, then we see it looks like... Uh, flashback to League of Assassins. And they only show the end of issue 5. Where apparently... There is this kid... Who... Is a fan of Victor Zaz. And according to him, this knife he has was used for his first kill. And that comes to play in this, in this issue here. So Victor Zaz is on the way to some place. And then we see this kid dressed up as Zaz with his own tally marks. He's he fights in goes to the juice like He's like, who are you? I say the Casino Tribute. He's like, my baby. He's like drooling. Yes, he's drooling the fat guy's knife back. And at one point, uh, this kid named, and apparently knew his name Zach. So apparently he's his son. And then of course, Damien threatens him. Yeah, of course he gets punched. But you gotta appreciate the fact Damien is he, he pulls knife or it, yes, but he's not going he was I, from what I could tell, it looks like he wasn't gonna kill him. Yeah, he mentioned I'm gonna train him of course stuff with Stone Mistress Hush Hirsch or Sush. Like, hmm, oh that's the nickname students have for me. Yep, watch you. Yeah. And we have Bruce seeing his drawings. He likes them. And then, of course, basically, like, then the issue ends with him reuniting with Flatline. Flatline. Hi, stranger. You don't call. You don't write. Can we talk? And, and Batman's like, friend of yours, son? <laughs> and then we move on to the end you know, where we have uh, the terrible, the, these twins, who I think are Chuck Dixon characters. It's like Batman versus of them. Yep. And this is the end of my Howard Porter, which... Yeah. It's like them going on... Yeah, Bruce and Damien going on a road trip. Outside of Gotham, which is interesting. And then, apparently, we see... Roulette in a cowgirl outfit. You're like, what? That's roulette? Yep. Okay, the one way to you know... Aside from the fact they say it's roulette, it definitely is. You know how? The dragon tattoo. Yes, it goes from her shoulder, goes down her belly, uh, it goes down to her leg. That's why I know this is roulette. As for why she's dressed like this, I don't know. She's doing her whole thing, and of course, basically, he worked with her, which is interesting. And it's all about starting a game with roulette, and this and it was really good. I mean, this guy here looks like a freaking xenomorph. Yeah, I'm not sure if William is very based on a xenomorph, but his head looks like a xenomorph. Yep. 
So, it's weird seeing Roulette wearing shorts and, uh, and, 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 uh, and a half top. It's weird because I've not, uh, basically she was not wearing a ge or a gator dress. Yeah, then, then we have, uh, Bruce on her makeup, basically take, try to take her on. Fire a gun here. She gets arrested. And then they go home. Fat the Gal City is wonderful spread. I like this spread. It's really good. This book is amazing. I give this book a 10 out of 10. Yep. Really good. Alright, next up we have is Green Lantern Volume 1 Back in Action. This contains Green Lantern Volume 6 issues 1 through 6 and the Night Terrors issues. The premise of this is simply this. Earth the, the whole sector, sector 20, uh, 20, uh, 14, has been quarantined. FNSR crisis. The reason is quarantine? Not explained here. That's a plot for later. So yeah, Jimmy, I was doing all the writing here with Grizzly doing the main issues. Uh, the Green Lantern issues, uh, for Night Terror is of Epergea, Jordi, uh, Tor and Hollow Ferrer and, uh, Fox Vico. Um, the main issues is Zermenko and Scott Kowalski. The first issue is this is simply How Come Back to Earth. And this book definitely feels like a Hal Jordan book. And it's mentioned also in this book that Carol's got a new boyfriend. So Hal basically being the Hornock, he really wants to see her. He still loves her. He's like, nope, not this time. He got a boyfriend. Yeah, in fact, he's back and, and his stuff with his car. He's living out of his car. And is a villain named Steel Fury, Flyer on Jets. Yeah, then in issue two he finds out the Earth to, the Earth has been quarantined. So he flies around. It's we have Demolition Team, all who also in team in, in book Titans. And the book is just amazing. And we see Kilowog here having drinks with Hal. And then we get this report. That by order of the United Plants, the United States vote sector twenty fourteen is member quarantine. Yes. And I mentioned Thal Sinestro, Hal Jordan, redacted, deceased, former uh, Lantern Gordon Jim Uh all the lands are reassigned for reasons. Of course you have so Hal's kind of pilot. Not test pilot, but a pilot for Carol's private jet. Yep. And of course, basically, he's po pokey fun of the fact that Carol's got a girlfriend, a boyfriend now. Yeah, then we leave straight. Into Here's the weird thing. After like three issues, it leads in Night Terror. So you can see why they put it in here. Because, yeah, it leads directly into this. And basically, it's all about flashes of basically people dying. And every dicks for no reason. It's basically how do I have a nightmare for two issues. This is the in here by Parallax. And there's also here with Sinestro. Which, the whole thing with Sinestro is that it leads into... Him, what goes on in the main book? Him going through the whole nightmare sequence too, and so how is actually after two issues they had the 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 nightmare stuff, and then then how is like falling to earth being Red Lantern again? Yeah, and then we have how just acting character. It's a really fun book, and then the issue ends where him, or apparently he's looking for Sinestro. Yeah, Sinestro. He's on Earth, which is interesting. Yeah, as for, and of course, Jeff in Lantern, it doesn't work. And then we have the Flash show up. Yes, the Flash. Bear, what? Yeah. This, um, based on the costume, it's, it's Barry. Yeah, that, that, that's Barry Allen. If this was Wally, this would be a darker red. You know, as I know, it's it's Barry the Chinstrap. Yep. Fun fact about Barry Allen. 
Uh, this book, Everybody's All Costumes when Rebirth happened, his costume didn't change. Nope. Barry Allen is wearing the same costume now for 13 years. Never changed. How it went back to his brief flash one entire. Batman changed his costume a couple times. Uh, Superman changed a couple times. Wonder Woman's changed it once. But Barry, nope. Still the same costume. And of course, deal with him in here, which is so good. And apparently, like... Yeah, then we have Barry just talking to Carol, and apparently she's engaged. And of course, she's like, so what is next to do my equipment? I don't know exactly. Yep, so they have to find out. And of course, he's called away. It's like Sinister really wants back into Lancer, because it's like he's not a Lancer anymore. So then we go right into the final issue here, issue six, issue number five. Is it five? Yeah, oh, it's six issues here. So he goes on. He basically blows some stuff up. And of course, you have a little nod to uh, one of uh, the early appearances of Green Lantern with him knocking out a plane like this, which is a nod to his day. Debut issue, which is Showcase 22. Lots of stuff here with Sinestro. And then Sinestro does something really weird at the end of the issue. Issue 5 revealed he is now a Red Lantern. Yes. He is now a Red Lantern. I do have a theory about this, but I don't know if Jeremy Adams will explore it. So, yeah. Sinestro is a Red Lantern now. Okay. Yeah, so after fighting him, he gets away. Oh, yeah, I love the whole uh, armor suit thing, which I think that's a nod to uh, probably Gundam, maybe. Fights him mon kaiju monster style, which is interesting. And then the issue ends with interesting notes where Hal's with with um, with Kilowog, and then Razor shows up. Yes, Razor, as in from the character from Grant in the animated series. And then it's revealed that the Kilowog who was seeing this whole book is a fake. Because Kilowog's dead. You're like, what? Interesting cliffhanger. Love this book. I give this book also a 10 out of 10. It's a really good book. Yes. Jeremy was hell out of the park with this thing. And makes you think, like, what let's take out Flash so he can do great so you can do Hal Jordan. Possibly, yes. But there was nothing said he couldn't do Flash at the same time. Because, from, from what I've been hearing about Jeremy Adams' run for Flash, it was well loved. People love this run for Flash. And people wondered, why did DC remove him for? Because one friend of mine basically mentioned uh, to me that, if, oh, the book gets to guess what, for years, we had to pull him from the, we had pulled this right from the title because of reasons. And it plays with a writer who may not be as good. I'm like, if the book is selling really good, let the writer continue. Let him leave when he wants to leave. Yeah. But, two really good books. Um, Want to get the next ones when they come out? Yes. Batman Robin? Oh, yes, definitely. Really, answer, I probably will, but I'm glad I got a chance to do a Night Terrors book. Uh, Night Terrors. The reception toward this particular storyline that came out just last year, which they did not release in October for some reason, at least in August, which even I found that weird. It's a horror story. Why the heck would you release in August? That's a good question. Yep. So, yeah, that's particularly a particular view. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe to notifications, and do another like button. Uh, so, thank you for later for my review for Fatal Frame, uh, Failure Frame. Okay, next video. Bye.